People suffer because they grasp and don't let go. Dissatisfaction follows them everywhere. Look carefully at your own heart and learn how to relinquish the cause of suffering. Through the Access Gate While living in the cliffs at Pugao Mountain, Mei Chi Gao came upon many strange and unusual phenomena in her nightly meditation. They were extraordinary, things that she never experienced before. As she emerged slightly from deep samadhi, Mei Chi Gao found her mind entering a familiar world of intersecting spiritual energies, a world occupied by countless realms of non-physical living beings. Some of these beings hailed from the dark and lowly regions where they suffered the consequences of their evil deeds. Others came from the lofty spheres of radiance inhabited by celestial devas and brahmas. It was as though her meditation delivered her to an open gate where her heart felt the pull of competing force fields each vying for her attention. Ajahn Mun had called it access concentration, warning her how vulnerable she was to the disparate spiritual energies that she might encounter there, and how she must establish steadfast control over her mind before stepping out the gate. While Meiji Gao took heed of Ajahn Mun's advice, she was curious and venturesome by nature, and could not resist the temptation to venture out and look around. What she witnessed both fascinated and horrified her. Disembodied spirits called, some howling, others screaming or weeping, besieging her, begging, pleading for redemption from the miserable retribution of their own misdeeds. Forms and faces clung to them like shrouds, the ghostly remnants of some past existence, some previous life, which followed them like deathly souvenirs from an unfinished journey. All pleaded for her attention, her sympathy, her grace, some gesture that would shine a ray of hope into the darkened corners of their existence. Often the disembodied spirits of slain animals appeared in her meditative visions, begging for a share of her spiritual merit to help them overcome their immense suffering. Late one night, just after Meiji Gao had withdrawn from Samadhi, a disembodied consciousness of a recently slain water buffalo appeared in front of her, wailing in pain and bemoaning its fate. Suspended in her vision, like a ghostly apparition, the buffalo immediately communicated its sad history. As Meiji Gao absorbed the message with her heart, the buffalo related that its owner was a fierce and cruel man whose heart lacked all kindness and compassion. He very often put his buffalo to work, pulling plows or wagons from dawn until dusk, and never showed any appreciation for the animal's daily hardship. On top of that, this merciless master beat and tortured the buffalo constantly. In the end, the poor animal was tied to a tree and brutally slaughtered for the sake of its meat. Before dying, it endured unspeakable pain and torment. It bellowed loudly, ripping the air with a sickening sound as its skull was repeatedly bludgeoned, until it finally collapsed unconscious. The disembodied consciousness of the buffalo, still traumatized and clinging to the remnants of its old form, was hoping for a share of Mei Chi Gao's merit and virtue so that it might have the opportunity to be reborn as a human being. Instinctively sensing Mei Chi Gao's compassionate nature, the spirit poured out the collective pain and suffering of its species to her. The buffalo described the brutality a water buffalo must endure, the unrelenting mistreatment and neglect by human beings, and constant abuse from other animals. Even a person, living in abject poverty, does not have to suffer the torment and indignity that a farm animal does. For that reason, the buffalo longed to be born as a human being in its next life. Michi Gao was surprised to hear a tale of such cruelty. She was familiar with many of the local farmers and found them to be kind-hearted and friendly people. Through her samadhi vision, she conveyed her suspicions to the animal. The buffalo claimed that its owner was a fierce and cruel man, lacking human decency, but the buffalo's heart was obviously full of hatred and vengeance, which may have distorted the truth. Mei Gao wondered that perhaps the water buffalo itself was misbehaving. Perhaps the owner beat it for a good reason. Opening her heart to the spirit, she communicated her query. Did you ever eat the vegetables that people planted in their gardens? Did you chew on the vegetables that people had carefully planted beside their fields? The farmers who live in this area are normally kind and gentle people. Why should they torment you if you did nothing wrong? 
it seems to me that you must have behaved badly to receive such treatment. Am I right? The reply of the slain water buffalo deeply touched Meiji Gao's heart. It admitted, I did such things only out of ignorance. I was worked in the fields all day and was never allowed in the pasture to graze. Hunger and fatigue drove me to eat whatever plants I could forage. All vegetation looked the same to me. It never occurred to me that certain plants might have an owner who was keeping an eye on them. I had no intention to steal. Had I understood human language, I might have never made that mistake. But people are far more intelligent than animals, so they should be more sympathetic and forgiving of our natural habits. They shouldn't just mercilessly exercise their power over other creatures, especially when it violates human standards of moral decency. A good person doesn't behave in such a shameful and offensive manner. Most of the farmers in this area are actually kind and gentle people, like you said. But my former master, Mr. Dunn, is a fierce and cruel man who lacks human decency. That scum of the earth is a man so pitiless that he is incapable of sympathy or forgiveness. He's even cruel to his fellow men, to say nothing of lowly animals. Since childhood, Meiji Gao had always felt a profound compassion for the plight of farm animals. She fed her cows and water buffalo lumps of sticky rice every day, whispering sweetly in their ears that because they worked the rice fields, they too deserved to eat rice. For that reason, the animals were very fond of her and felt appreciated. For example, when the rope around its neck, holding the cow bell, broke, the cow would walk straight to Meiji Gao to alert her about the lost bell instead of wandering away, undetected and grateful for its freedom. Nonetheless, Meiji Gao realized that even those animals which were well treated by their masters were still bound by their gamma to a life of constant suffering. Meiji Gao knew that feelings of hatred and revenge are major causes of birth in the lower realms of existence. Seeing the anger in her unfortunate visitor, she taught it the dangers inherent in a hate-filled, vengeful state of mind. She warned that those negative emotions ran counter to its desire to be born as a human being in its next life. If it really expected to be born human, it must keep such destructive mental defilements under control. Meiji Gao explained that the five moral precepts are the basis of a decent human being. If the spirit were to have any chance to be reborn in a human form, it must make a solemn resolve to abide by these fundamental rules of conduct. It must not take life or cause injury to other creatures. It must not steal or take things that belong to others, like the vegetables people plant in their gardens. It must not commit adultery or engage in harmful sexual practices. It must not lie or deliberately deceive others, and it must not indulge in any substance that causes intoxication or drunkenness. By killing, stealing, committing adultery, and lying, you not only do harm to others, but you also violate the spirit of openness and trust that forms the basis of human relations. Indulging in intoxication is considered evil because it clouds the mind and readily conduces to the other four offenses. From a karmic viewpoint, such actions result in rebirth among common animals, hungry ghosts, or the hell realms. In these lower realms of existence, suffering is intense and a weakened capacity for spiritual development makes it very difficult to produce the necessary conditions for rebirth in the higher realms. Therefore, faithfully observing the moral precepts prevents the possibility of being born into the lower realms and helps to ensure that you will be born as a human being. So, if you can maintain this level of moral virtue and renounce the tendency to think, speak, and act in evil ways, then you can truly expect to be rewarded with a human birth, if not now, then in the future. Fully sympathetic to the troubled spirit's desperate condition, Meiji Gao compassionately resolved to share with it her spiritual merit and virtue, hoping that might help to sow the seeds of rebirth in the human realm. May the merit and virtue that I share with you now help to guard your behavior, nourish your spirit, and lead you on the path to develop the spiritual qualities needed to gain birth in a realm of real happiness. Having rejoiced in Meiji Gao's exceptional virtue and received her blessing, the disembodied spirit of the water buffalo departed in a bright, happy, cheerful mood, as though it were off to be reborn in its chosen realm of happiness. Early the next morning, Meiji Gao called aside one of the local villagers and quietly told him what had happened the night before. She requested him to inquire about Mr. Dun, the water buffalo's former owner, and find out where he lived and what had transpired between him and the buffalo. But she warned the man not to let Mr. Dawn know she had asked him to investigate the matter. Feeling disgraced, he might think badly of Meiji Gao, which would merely increase his store of evil gumma. 
The villager immediately replied that he and Mr. Ton lived in the same village and that he knew the man well. He knew for a fact that Mr. Ton had lashed his water buffalo to a tree and slaughtered it at eight o'clock the previous night. The agonizing cries of the poor animal could be heard throughout the neighborhood. After killing it, the man roasted its meat and held a big party for his friends. They feasted all night, making a great commotion, yelling, laughing, and carousing until nearly dawn. Acts of evil always dismayed Meiji Gao. On a deep, personal level, she felt a strong pang of lament and sorrow, as though the transgressor were her own child, whose brutal actions had betrayed her trust in humanity's inherent goodness. She witnessed perpetrator and victim trading places in a karmic dance of blame and revenge, cruelty and hatred, spiraling downward, birth after birth, toward lower and darker realms of existence. Meiji Gao told her supporter that the buffalo's only hope of redemption lay in renouncing hatred and vengeance and rejoicing in the virtuous deeds of others. Although its ghostly existence prevented it from performing acts of merit, it could still participate in others' good deeds by applauding those acts and spiritually identifying itself with the resulting merit and virtue. By creating a spiritual bond with her, the deceased buffalo had taken a positive step forward to a favorable rebirth. Beings who still wander through the round of samsara should reflect carefully on these events, for similar circumstances could befall anyone who neglects to promote spiritual virtue or who disdains the practice of fundamental moral principles.